Greetings, one and all. Welcome back to NHL 19 Franchise Mode with your Winnipeg Jets. Yes, we are back here again to play the second half of our first season at the helm of the Jets franchise. Now, last episode, we started this series. We played the first 42 games of the 18-19 NHL season, and we currently have a record of 25 wins, 9 losses, and 8 overtime or shootout losses, which is good enough for third place in our division. However, we are only two points behind the first place Colorado Avalanche, and we have two games in hand on the Colorado Avalanche, which means that if we win at least one of those games, we are still very much in the race for first place in the Central Division. Also, a very interesting thing about this is, having looked at the standings in the NHL at the end of last episode, four of the top five NHL teams in the league at the moment are from the Central Division. Those four being the Colorado Avalanche, the Dallas Stars, us, the Winnipeg Jets, and the St. Louis Blues. So it's a very competitive central division so far this season. It'll be very interesting to see which teams actually come out on top by the end of the season. Do all of the teams keep it this close until the very last day of the season? Or do two, three, maybe one of the teams drop off and it's a clear one, two, three split? I guess we'll find out, but it's very interesting to think about. Then the team leader in points so far with 49 points, 15 goals, 34 assists in 42 games is Mark Scheifele. Hey, thanks, Scheifele. Uh, I've never really had a player in any of these franchise modes recently that goes over a point per game for the entirety of the season. So if Scheifele can keep this up, I will be a very happy person because we might actually win some awards. I do quite like to win some of the awards in this game. So thanks, Scheifele. Do appreciate it. Now, before we carry on with this episode, I did notice something while I was setting up this episode while I was looking at my lines. So we've had a f an injury or two to our forward lines. And I noticed in the left wing position on the fourth line is Joe Morrow. Now, the interesting thing about this is, as you can see written up there, Joe Morrow is a defenseman. I have done this before in previous series of um, franchise mode. When I just want a quick fix, chuck a defenseman in there for two games or so. But I'm not really interested with this with this team, especially at this moment in time. I want this team to be a contender. I want this team to have depth throughout the lineup. So that if a player on the forwards or the defence get injured, we've got a solid player that can easily replace them and it's as if nothing happened. So I was thinking, do I do this via trades? Do I go into the trade deadline and try and get something done there? So I thought, let's check the free agents. Let's see who's available. And the two that I found that I'm interested in are Mike Camilleri and Chris Versteeg. So I offered Chris Versteeg, I offered him a contract of $7.5 million dollars. For this season. He's roughly 78 overall. At the worst he'll be what? 75 overall I think. Which isn't too bad at all. And then Mike Camilleri. I decided to offer him a $1.250 million contract. For this one year. I mean we don't really know much about Mike Camilleri. His scouting isn't the best. But I reckon he's not going to be worse than 80 overall. So I've got a left winger and a right winger. So that if there's any injuries. We've got a winger on either side. Maybe that can play centre. That can slot in and help the lineup. So then we don't have to have a defenceman playing. So, for example, the face-offs on... Uh, where's this face-offs? I don't see... Oh, there it is. Supposedly, his are 66. I mean, we don't, we haven't really scouted them too much. And with, uh, with you, they're roughly 80. So, for example, Camilleri could slot in and play centre if we get an injury to a centreman. So, I figured I'd sign these two guys, see what happens. I think they're both going to sign with the team. It's for half the season, and I'm not really expecting to keep them for next season. So, I'm not really going to complain if they don't really put up too many points. I just want the depth. I want them to be able to be smart defensively because we've been allowing a lot of goals in, in a few games. So I want to make sure they help out the defense because our defense is the weaker part of our roster, to be honest. So yeah, let's go with that. So let's go up to the trade deadline and see where our team is at, see if we need to make any trades and see what we can pick up, basically. So we're coming off a 5-2 win against the Colorado Avalanche. We've won two of our last three games. We're going 2-1-1 one, one in our last four so, I believe the trade deadline is the 26th of February against the Minnesota Wild. So, we start this simulation with a 4-2 loss. Perfect. So, Mike Camilleri has accepted his contract, as has Chris Versteeg. Perfect. So, we've picked up some extra depth players. A 3-1 victory against the Detroit Red Wings. Perfect. Dylan Hetherington is on waivers. 75 overall at 23 years old. You know what? I'm going to decline that. Thank you, though, Dallas Stars. I do appreciate that offer. An 8-3 win against the Anaheim Ducks. Wow, that's a convincing victory. Then a 4-1 loss against the Vegas Golden Knights. That's a shame. Um, so the Calgary Flames want to offer us Travis Hamanick for a first and fourth round pick. No, thank you. I mean, if they offer that again, I will check what Travis Hamanick is like. 4-3 victory against the National Predators, I, I should also add. 
Ah, Dennis Everberg has been injured for Manitoba. Manitoba's playing quite well, though, this season. Adam Lowry's been injured with a bruised arm. This is exactly why I picked up those two forwards. Perfect. 6-4 victory. Lovely. Oh, here we go. Uh, Central Scouting. Uh, Central Scouting has released their latest set of draft rankings. Okay, let's view the draft class. So we've scouted quite a few of these guys. Of course, we've scouted the, the to supposed top guys. Uh, USA West and USA East. So some... Wow. Okay. Interesting. So some... Uh, Americans. Well, the Americans might take the first three spots. I don't think that's happened in a very long time, if that's ever happened in the draft. So, we're not going to look at them, because we're hoping to make the playoffs. So, I think we should look at 30, 25 to 31. You know, 25 to 31. Those are probably likely going to be the um, players that we're going to we're gonna scout. So, pin you, pin you, pin you, pin you, pin you, and pin you. So, we've got, what, uh, defenseman, Got a defenseman from La Liga. We've got a WHL um, left winger. We've got a couple of centers. One from the Q, one from USA West. Well, a defenseman from Russia. He might be playing in the K, so I'll keep an eye out on him. Uh, Reese, USA West, and Poulin, the Q. Okay, interesting. So let, let, let's take a look at those guys, see if we get anything interesting. So our bye week is taking place at the moment. Uh, Adam Lowry is back in the lineup. That's perfect. Add him back in. Manitoba have almost got a very similar record to us at the moment, so fair play to them. Having a very good season. Andrew Kopp is available. Good. Welcome back to the lineup. Andrew Kopp is injured again. He's back in February. Fair enough. Okay, game against Philly and a shootout win. And Dustin Bufflin's been injured until February 10th. Okay, that's not too good. But he'll be back soon. So that's fine. Um, so, uh, TJ Brody and Michael Stone for, for two first round picks. I mean, I'm not going to do this trade at all. I, I know how to trade players game. Thank you. Um, I will just want to take a look at their defensive core, really. Because they're offering me quite a few defensemen. I, I know how this works, game. Thank you. Uh, so, defensemen. Who have they got? Uh, 86 overall, Giordano. Hannafin at 83. Brody. So, Hamnick's only an 83 overall. I've already got two players like that. My second pairing is both 83 rated players. So, I'm alright. A win against Boston, 4-2. A loss. Wow, we get shut out against the Columbus Blue Jackets, 5-0. At home, I believe, as well. So, that's not very good. Um, an injury for Manitoba. A 4-1 win against the Anaheim Ducks. Good. We've scored quite a lot of goals on them recently. Kyle Connor is back in the lineup. Add him back in against San Jose. A 3-1 victory. Sammy Niku is injured for the uh, Manitoba Moose. Big buffs back. Lovely. So the New York Rangers want to offer us Lucas Spisa. I don't know why they signed him. Uh, and the fourth and fifth round picks for a second and fourth. No, thank you. No, thank you, game. I'm good. I appreciate the offer, though. Kyle Connor. Oh, Kyle Connor has got himself injured with an MCL sprain. He won't return till April 30th, so he might miss the first round of the playoffs. That is a pain in the ass, but that's why I signed these extra forwards. I'm so glad that I did that now. Back-to-back uh, -back losses in Canada against the Habs and the Senators. Then a 2 nothing loss against the Buffalo Sabres. Ooh. Three-game losing streak, four-game losing streak, a 2-1 loss to the New York Rangers. Can we get back on the winning path here now, please, lads? A 2-1 loss against the Colorado Avalanche. Oh, this isn't looking very good, is it? Okay, against the Ottawa Centres again. Ah, Marco Dano's been injured until February 26th with an injury. Uh, fifth and, a, and Lemieux for a fourth. No, thank you, Edmonton. Against Ottawa, we take a 3-2 loss. Wow, we're going on a losing streak now, gents. I don't want that trade, Montreal. Thank you. Oh, oh good. Connor Hellebuck is able to return to the lineup. Thank you very much. So we're getting our starting goaltender back. I forgot he was injured, to be honest. So we're at, what, on a five-game losing streak? Huh. Logan Stanley and Jets for Johnson and Spees. Oh, Spees has been traded to the Arizona Coyotes and they immediately want to trade him again. A 2-0 loss again against the Colorado Avalanche. Wow, we are going on a losing streak right now. Come on, let's get a win against Vegas. Thank you. Finally, a win against Vegas and we're a little bit back on track. Let's get a win against Arizona. I don't want Geordie Ben. Thank you, Habs. A win against Arizona and we'll be set. We'll be back on the winning path. Uh, second and fourth round picks for a second Lemieux and a fifth. No, thank you. Against Arizona, please get a win here. Please get a win. Please win against Arizona. They're not a good team. Thank you very much. A 2-1 victory. Um, wow, this is a big trade. Logan Stanley, Lemieux, a first and a seventh. Fahid, a third, a second, and Edler. No, thank you. So, we're at the trade deadline. Didn't have the best of streaks there. We started off quite well. I mean, we dropped the first game. Then we picked up, what was that, uh, four in the next five games in victories. Then we got two more wins, then a loss, then a win, or two straight wins. Then we started our losing streak of, what, seven games? A seven-game losing streak. We're now on a two-game winning streak, so we're kind of climbing back up there a little bit. 
But we are third place in our division. St. Louis are currently topping it. 68 points in 62 games for Shifley, so that's good. We are tied with Dallas, who are also a wild card spot for points, which isn't very good. We are only four points back from second place. We are only seven points back from first place. So we have the chance to still clinch the central division, which is kind of what we want. Adam Lowry's up at an 81 overall. Decent. Good job, son. Uh, everyone in and outside this league will be watching tonight. All the players love it. Of course they do. So, I'm not sure what we do here. Do we trade for any players? Um, let's edit the lines and see what's going on. Let's just see what's happening here in this lineup. So, if we go best lines, just to see what they suggest. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much similar to what I would have suggested anyway. Who's scratched in this lineup? Carl Connor, because he's injured. Joe Morrow and Pullman. Okay. So, the first line, I mean, they're playing incredible anyway. Like, he's got, what, 60, 68 points in 62 games. Blake Wheeler's got 62 points in 62 games. Patrick line has got uh, 64 points in 62 games. So, my first line's rocking it. They're loving it. They're having a great time. Um, the second line, not so much. Um, uh, the, yeah, these lines aren't doing too well. Only 35 points in 62 games for Nikolai Ehlers. That's not too good for him, I must admit. Uh, defense, we've got Truba Bufflin, Morrissey, Myers, and then Kulikov and Sharot. Thank you for uh, letting me know his name was pronounced Sharot, by the way. Uh, chat or comments. Thank you, I do appreciate that. And then in goalie, goaltending positions, we've got Steve Mason and Connor Hellebug. Okay. I mean, I don't really know what we can do with this team. I, I, you know, I, I don't really know what the solution is. We've got a team that's capable of making it to the playoffs. I think they will make it to the playoffs, but I kind of want to clinch the division. So let's just take a look at the players matching the block, really. All, all the players that are on offer. So I did see some interesting players with this one. So Adam Henrique, Jakob Silverberg, Andre Schuster, Ryan Kessler. So we've got some big players interested there. Um... We've got Jolmerson, Golagoski, and Boland here. Jolmerson's an 84 overall defenseman. I don't really want that, though. Um, the Buff uh, Boston, I should say. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres. Matt Molson, Scott Wilson. No, thank you. Uh, Calgary. Valamaki. And then I don't know the rest of them. Carolina. Dahlbeck. Chicago. Chris Kunitz. I've already got Camilleri for a role like that. Colorado, nobody. Columbus. Gabriel Carlson, but nothing really. Uh, nothing really for Dallas. Detroit, Nicholas Cronwall, but I don't really need him. Uh, they've also got Gustav Nyquist there, but I'm not really that interested. Edmonton, none. Troy Brower for Florida. Clegg for the Kings. No prospects. Prospects. Another prospect. Ben Lovejoy. I mean, no, not really. Thomas Hickey. I mean, he's okay, but I don't really need him. The Rangers, Kevin Hayes. I mean, I don't really need him either. That's the problem with most of these players. I don't really need them. Eric Carlson. Okay, so Eric Carlson's on the trade block, as is Mark Stone and Matt Duchesne. I mean, those are some decent pickups. Uh, right wing. I mean, that would be decent, but I I'm more interested in keeping uh, Nikolai Ehlers on the wing. Eric Carlson would be an awesome pickup. I mean, his contract runs out at the end of the season. Definitely want to look to try and sign him. But, um, I mean, I, I basically sign him every single franchise mode anyway. But, I mean, he's a solid player. 90 overall. I would pick him up. I'd, I'm going to wait till the end of the season and see if he gets re-signed. I want to try and be in the Carlson sweepstakes. I'm not going to give up loads to pick him up now. Justin Braun. Wow, 85 overall. He's actually got a bit of a decent upgrade, Justin Braun, to be fair. 85 overall. Jonas Donskoy, 82 overall. 85 overall is not too bad. He's probably at an 83, though, because he's not exactly completely scouted. Jordan Cairo. Radish. The Maple Leafs, they've got Dursey, don't know who that is. Uh, Heed, 82 overall, supposedly. Carpenter for the Vegas Golden Knights. Johansson, that's about it. Yeah, there's not really anybody that I'm going, I need to have that player. I'm going to trust in the roster that we have at the moment and the moves that we've made. I think they're good enough to get us into the playoffs and hopefully clinch the division. We're coming off a two-game winning streak. We lost seven straight games. If we have an eight-game winning streak, then we've completely cancelled it out. We probably won't, but I'd be happy if we did. So let's simulate to the end of the season. Let's see how this team does. Let's go to the 7th of uh, April, I believe. Okay, against the Minnesota Wild to start. A shootout win. Good. Three straight wins for us. Minnesota get a point, but I don't care. They're like fifth place in the division. A 3-2 loss against Nashville. That's not very helpful. Seth Griffith has been injured with a concussion. That's a shame. Good. A 6-3 win against Columbus. In Columbus as well. So it's an away victory. Uh, away against Tampa Bay. We get a 6-3 loss. Okay, we're going about 500 at the moment. 
3-1 loss against Carolina. That's not too good. Come on, against Washington, get this win. Good. Defending Stanley Cup champions lose in a shootout. Seth Griffith is back for the Manitoba Moose. They're having a great season. 8-3 win against the San Jose Sharks. Perfect. Eric Comrie has got a broken toe. That's a shame. Against Boston, we get a shootout win. Good. Three straight wins. Against Calgary, a 3-0 win. Good. Only... Wow. I mean, except for the uh, Sharks game, in three games we've played, we've only allowed two goals. That's pretty decent. Eric Comrie's back for Manitoba. Awesome. Uh, Brandon Tanev has broken his leg. He's out until June 11th. So Brandon Tanev is out for the entirety of the playoffs, pretty much. Wow. Brandon Tanev. And we've got another injury as well. Okay, well, this isn't too good. So Brandon Tanev, he was a 79 overall left winger. Carl Connor's out, but he's going to be back soon. So if we go best lines here, who comes in? Nick Patan. Joe Morrow comes in. Okay, so roster moves. Let's bring up Chris Versteeg. Because he's playing in the system at the moment, isn't he? Mike Camelot is a 79 overall. You see? Like, that's not too bad. Why would we have to waive Chris Versteeg? I thought it was a two-way contract. Oh. Okay. That kind of sucks. Um, we'll bring up Lemieux then. 75 overall. Don't have to waive him. Why not? I think it makes the most sense to me. So we've got best lines. That should have sorted out this to have Lemieux in. Okay. Morrow's in there instead. But... Patan, he's a right winger, so he can go back to the fourth line, and Lemieux can play third line time. We've only got two left wingers in this lineup, damn. There you go, perfect. Okay, yeah, that looks good to me. And then, uh, who's got the better face-off stat? Uh, 70, Roslovic has 76. Okay, fair dues, I'll leave them like that then. Truba, Bufflin, Morrissey, Myers, Kulikov, Sharap, perfect. Goaltenders, Hellebuck, Steve Mason. Perfect, there we go. So against the LA Kings, we get a 5-3 loss. Eric Comrie's broken his toe again. Wow, we just can't get a break. Play him around. Let's have a chat with our players. What, what, do you want, what do you want to talk about, boys? What's up, Lemieux? I'm glad you've pulled the trigger on calling me up. You have to prove you can stay up here, bud. He responded favorably to my strong tone. Good. So, away against Anaheim. Can we bounce back with a win? Yes, we can. 2-1. Then a 2-1 loss against Vegas. Wow, Vegas have been destroying us this season. Home against Nashville. Can we get a win? A division opponent. No, we can't. We lose 4-3. Against Dallas, can we win? No, we lose 3-0. Those were two games that we kind of needed to win there. And we didn't. So that's a bit of a pain in the ass. Home against the Islanders, a 5-3 loss. We're on a four-game losing streak here now, lads. Five-game losing streak. Thanks, Montreal. Home against Chicago, a 5-2 win. Good. A 4-1 win against the Wild. A 5-2 loss against Colorado. We definitely haven't clinched the division here. And away against Arizona. Last game of the season. Uh, Veselainen's been injured. We get a 3-1 victory. Okay, so we finished the season with a 45 29 and 8 record. That is good enough for a wild card spot. Wow, look at that central division. Jesus Christ. 111 points for the Blues, 110 for Colorado, 104 for Dallas, 98 for us, and 89 for Minnesota. Wow. The difference. Wow, I mean, Chicago was only seven points out of a playoff spot. That has got to be one of the most competitive. Divisions. Wow, the Tampa Bay Lightning, of course, won the President's Trophy. I'm not surprised. Uh, Toronto made the playoffs with 89 points. Two 100-point teams in the Metropolitan with Pittsburgh, Washington. Uh, the New York Rangers. The New York Rangers are only two points out of a playoff spot. Fair play. So, wow, the Central Division was absolutely stacked this year, though. Jesus, 91 points in 82 games for Mark Scheifele. So he managed to achieve sort of a decent amount of points. Patrick Lyon, 84 points. Blake Wheeler dropped off at the end, but he still almost went a point per game. 55 points for Matthew Perot. Thank you very much. Brian Little, 54. Nikolai Ehlers, 45. The best rated player on that line didn't get very many points, which is a bit of a shame. So, uh, yeah, Patrick Lyon scored 34 goals. Blake Wheeler with 30. Shifley with 27. 64 assists for him, though. Patrick Lyon, 50 assists. I want to see how this ranks with the rest of the league. So in terms of the most points, Alexandro Vetchkin wins with 100 points. Conor McDavid isn't even in the top 10. Did he get injured this season? He must have done. Where on earth is Conor McDavid? Conor McDavid isn't in this list. He, he must have had like a season-ending injury. I cannot see him there for the life of me. That's interesting. Where is Conor McDavid on this list? 91 points. So Mark Shifley was second in the league in goal scoring. Wow, fair play, dude. And 60 goals for Alexander Ovechkin. Are you kidding me? 60 goals? Wow. That's ridiculous. 60 goals. And assists. We had 64 assists. So Mark Shifley led the league in assists. That's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. 
So Mark Scheifele had a fantastic year. Now I need to check the Edmonton Oilers. I need to see what's going on here. Edmonton Oilers, where you at? Uh, I want to go... Oh, yeah, because they have the conferences at the top, don't they? Edmonton Oilers, where did Conor McDavid go? Conor McDavid. He played 82 games. He only had 65 points in 82 games. I don't believe that at all. A minus 17. Nugent Hopkins almost had more points than him. Wow. That's very interesting. He scored 35 goals, to be fair, but that's very interesting. The fact that he only got 65 points. Hmm, okay. So, let's take a look at who we are playing in the playoffs. So, we're going for the Stanley Cup here, ladies and gents. We've made all the moves to hopefully secure ourselves a good chance at winning the Cup. We didn't get first in our conference. We didn't get 52 wins. Well, I tried my best. And we are up against the Calgary Flames to start our 2019 NHL playoffs at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome because they actually played better than us by the end of the season, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but there you go. So, yes, I'm going to end this episode here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, next episode, we are going to play through the 2019 NHL playoffs and hopefully lead our Winnipeg Jets to a Stanley Cup victory. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye!